In this video, we'll be going over working with trend lines. There are several features that are built into MotiveWave to make working with trend lines easier. In order to create a trend line, we can click on the Tools drop-down and select the Line tool. We can also use the keyboard shortcut instead. In this case, on the Mac, it's Command-Shift-L, and on the PC, it would be Control-Shift-L. So if we use the keyboard shortcut here, our cursor now changes to the Line tool. In creating a trend line, there are two points created by clicking with the left mouse button. The first point will be the starting point, and the second click will determine the end point. Now, if you have Revert to Default tool set to Off in the Configure Preferences, then your cursor will still be set to the Line tool. In order to set this to your default tool, you can simply just click on the space bar. And in this case, it is set to the default time drag tool. Now, when a trend line is selected, you'll notice that there's some information displayed. In this case, you'll notice that the price range and time span are shown. In this case, the price range is 5,833.9 pips approximately, and the time span is 2,820 days because this is a monthly chart. Now, in adjusting the trend line by selecting one of the endpoints, you'll notice that it will snap to either the high or a low of a bar. In this case, you can press the Alt key to disable that. So if you keep the Alt key down, you'll notice that it no longer snaps, allowing you to place it anywhere you want. Holding down the Shift key while moving one of the endpoints will allow you to select common angles such as horizontal, vertical, and 45 degrees. This makes it much easier. And by selecting only the control key while your left mouse button is pressed down, this will restrict the trend line to that specific angle so you can adjust its length. So let's just put this back. Detailed information about the trend line can be found if you place the mouse cursor over the trend line and leave it there for two seconds. The information that we will see is the start and end prices, the range percentage move, time span and price bars, as well as the start and end times. There are several operations for working on trend lines and they can be found by right mouse clicking on the line to show its context menu. And you'll see here we have the option to create an alert. From here, provided that the trend line extends past price, we can set a specific alert based on a condition, in this case price crossing the trend line, and an alert will be triggered. Now there's more information on alerts in a separate video, so refer to that video in regards to the details in setting alerts. We also have the option to show the info for the trend line. So if we were to select away from the trend line, even though it's still deselected, we still see the info. As you can see, if I click and then right click again, we have the option of showing the angle. There's an angle here of the specific trend line. We also have relative endpoint. And what this will do is it'll calculate the endpoint relative to the start point instead of using a specific time value for the endpoint. And you'll notice the change in that once you bring up the info box, you'll notice that the end date, in this case December 20, 2021, would have changed if you had the relative endpoint selected. Right click. If we were to click on extend, then this will extend the trend line to the right. If we were to select Extend Left, then it will extend it to the left. Let's undo that. And if we were to select Extend Left Right, then both sides would be extended. Let's undo that. Let's go back. We can also select the trend line to have ratios. So in this case, I'm going to select um, the Fibonacci Blue and I'm going to select it as the retracement ratios. And now you'll notice that they will show. So you have the zero point on one of the points of the line, and then you have the 100% lining up with the other point of the line. Let's turn that off. Let's go back. 
There's some other options under line. We can, for example, show the midpoint. Here it's an X, it may be hard to see, but there's an X here in the midpoint of the line. We can also have the line act as a radius for a circle. Let's undo that. We can have the line act as a diameter for a circle. Let's undo that. We can have the line flipped. Let's undo that. We can have the line rotate 90 degrees. Undo. We can rotate the line 45 degrees. Let's undo that. Now we can draw another line here. So if I were to bring up the line tool using my keyboard shortcut, and if I were to draw a line here that is not exactly parallel, if I now select my original line and then select the second line, right click, I can now make the lines parallel and it will be parallel to the first line that I selected. You can also tell by the color of the dots the originally selected line has green endpoints while the other line has blue endpoints. And now you'll see that MotorWave has made this line parallel to this line. And we could do that with multiple lines. If I were to uh, yet draw another line underneath here, and I'll make this a bit tighter. Now again, if I were to select the middle line and then the other two holding the shift key down, then right clicking, selecting line, make lines parallel and equidescent. What that will do is it'll make all three lines parallel using the first selected line with the green endpoints as the guide. And it'll also make them equidescent, meaning that the spacing between the lines will also be equal. So if we click on that, you now see the three parallel lines with equal spacing. Okay, so that's it for this video, and we'll see you in the next.